Hello, trading friends, and welcome back to Forex Focus, brought to you by IG. We just saw the March FOMC conclude. Fed Chair Powell just finished his post-FOMC press conference, and uh, oh boy, do we have a lot of price action coming out of this event. S&Ps hit all-time highs above 5,200. Gold nearing 2200 nearing those all-time highs in gold futures uh u.s interest rates and dollar sinking after fed chair powell's speech uh not so much after the unchanged interest rate movement uh no change yet but after fed chair powell came out and said that rate cuts still likely even amid the sticky high inflation in the u.s uh, markets started to move. And let's take a look at that movement, starting with the S&P. Uh, we have the intraday chart, and you can see coming out of that press conference uh, this afternoon, stocks rose across the board, really, but the S&P putting in uh, another new all-time high here in 2024, above 5,200 um, as uh, the rate hold. Didn't do much, but again, uh, Fed Chair Powell's words uh, came out as dovish and uh, I guess incentivizing some stock demand as well as some gold uh, demand, gold prices. They didn't necessarily hit a new all-time high like the S&P or the NASDAQ, uh, but they did get back up to 2180 and saw a huge intraday rally off of Fed Chair Powell's speech. Um, as, uh, of course, the non-interest-bearing gold market could look a lot more attractive if uh, rate cuts are indeed coming. Now, of course, there, there is a bit of awkwardness, right? They held rates unchanged for, I don't even know which, uh, how many meetings in a row now it's been uh, that we've gotten no action from the Fed. Um, but the, the bulk of the price action in the market coming off of Fed Chair Powell's words that uh, if the economy evolves broadly as expected, it will likely be appropriate to begin dialing back policy restraint at some point this year. That being the big piece, um, not at some point in the future, um, but at some point this year, very concrete words. Um, but that awkwardness is, once again, they're holding rates unchanged again in March. And the data from the U.S. in 2024, uh, the first three months here, has been strong from an employment standpoint, from a GDP standpoint. Um, and inflation has stayed in the 3 to 4% range, depending on whether you're looking at CPI or PCE. And the Fed wants it down at 2%. Um, and so... Of course, Fed Chair Powell has uh, probably more information on the U.S. economy than anyone uh, in the world, maybe. And so if he is confident that rates will come lower at some point this year, then uh, I, I guess the, the market interpreting that as being enough, even though the inflation data isn't quite there, because you're seeing here from Fed Funds Futures, we get the projections on where interest rates will be at future Fed meetings. And uh, the June meeting now, looking at close to a 75% chance of rates being lower by the end of that June meeting. Uh, and this was closer to 50-50 um, just a few hours ago going into uh, Fed Chair Powell's speech, uh, at, at which point he said, again, that uh, rates likely to get lower at some point this year. And so everybody's eyeing June as the first rate cut. We'll see those odds will likely fluctuate in one direction or another or both uh, in the lead up to June. But for the time being, uh, this March Fed meeting being interpreted as dovish for sure. And uh, another piece of information that we get here, the first of 2024, dot plots from the Fed. And uh, this was one that, again, could have gone either way, could have gone more in the hawkish camp. Uh, you could have seen central bankers here in the U.S. revise their dot plot from December, uh, maybe higher, given that data has been so strong in the U.S. the first few months of the year. 
Uh, but this was interpreted again as a, a another dovish piece, given that the consensus is still three rate cuts in 2024, and that's what it was back in December of 2023 before we saw a little bit of resurgence in inflation and employment data in the U.S. that kind of shook people and sent uh, U.S. interest rates in dollars higher in the first couple of months of this year. And so consensus still around 75 basis points lower here in 2024. Looking to the outer years of the projection, um, anywhere between 3 and 4% in uh, 25 and 26 and in the longer run it looks like uh, most central bankers want the overnight interest rate in the u.s uh, around two and a half percent if they can uh, dial inflation into two percent or lower um, uh, they think that that'll be a good middle ground in the longer run but let's finish by taking a look at uh, u.s dollars um, as uh, weakening pretty much across the board here for this U.S. dollar on, again, an unchanged interest rate, but news, uh, a confirmation again from Powell that he still sees rate cuts coming in the U.S., and that being interpreted as a dovish Fed meeting for March. Euro back above 109. Uh, Aussie bouncing back about uh, 40 pips uh, by the time we took this uh, screen grab of the IG platform. Pound also moving higher. Uh, Canadian dollar getting back some of what was lost in the last uh, couple of days. Uh, like I say, really across the board, even yen um, able to eke out some uh, gains against uh, this U.S. dollar at certain points during the trading day today, uh, and that's in light of what's been a really weak yen. So uh, we'll see how it all plays out for the time being, U.S. dollar starting to edge lower but of course we have central bank meetings from uh, a, a number of other global economies coming up and so we'll see how it shakes up from a forex standpoint but for the time being we have stocks moving higher gold moving higher both those markets either at or near all-time highs as uh, u.s interest rates are giving back some ground and uh, u.s dollar also starting to edge lower thanks for watching